Hi guys, I'm Jesse, and we're here at Animal Wonders. Today we're in the reptile room because I wanted to make an improvement on one of the animal's enclosures, and I wanted to show you how I do that. The animal I have in here is a red-eyed crocodile skink. His name is Turd, and I've already pulled this enclosure out of my shelving unit so that I could be all, all ready for you. I wanted to start not clean because a lot of you might already have a reptile and you might want to improve their life by switching over to a bioactive enclosure. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So the first thing you need to do is pull your animal out and put them in a safe temporary space. I have a Tupperware here. It has holes drilled in the top. I'm going to find him. That's probably going to be the most challenging part here because Turd is a baby and I'm never quite sure where he's going to be. He does like to hide in here. Oh, there he is. He's like all the way in here. So actually, I'm just going to put this right in there. Wow, that was easy. A lot easier than I thought. All right, there you go, Turd. You're just going to set to the side. Now I have to clear all this stuff out. I'm just going to go ahead and, and put it in a, another bin here just to keep everything contained. If you don't have a bioactive enclosure set up, you're going to need to change out all of this substrate every month or so. Otherwise, it'll become saturated and compacted, and then it'll turn, actually turn acidic, and you can get some kind of hazardous stuff going on in the enclosure. I love switching my enclosures to a bioactive, so ice pods and springtails, they are detritivores or decomposers and they will clean up the, the feces and then a dead plant material and uh, make it just like it would be in, in the wild where it wouldn't become, the soil wouldn't like become dead or acidic and you don't have to clean as much. All right, now that I have most of my substrate out, I don't really need to clean it that well because I am going to a bioactive enclosure and it'll be fine that that is not perfectly cleaned out. The first thing I wanna do is kind of get situated for my water feature. It's a real simple waterfall. It's got a little pump here, and I'm just gonna set this up in the back behind my um, styrofoam board. I'm going to measure how big I want the waterfall, and it's about right there. I can always change this up, cut it to size. This little tube is gonna bring the water up from the pump get on there. I'm just gonna poke a hole right in here to fit the little tube. I'm gonna use this little extender to shape where I want the water to go. So I want it to come right out that little hole there and kind of shoot down. All right, now I'm going to add the drainage layer. That is basically where you want all the water to collect and not get your substrate super sopping wet. I use Hydro Balls and they're a clay ball that will just sit on the bottom. I like to see it about uh, about three quarters of an inch deep, and that's just going to allow the space for the water to kind of fill up and then not touch the substrate above it. All right, next up is I want to put my mesh layer on top. This is going to go above the drainage layer and below the soil so that we're not getting the soil substrate into the water layer at all. And depending on your tank size, you may have to trim this and because I have the backdrop in there you can see that I have extra so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it off all right and now we're ready for the substrate you can mix your own substrate but I find it much easier just to get this pre-made package from Josh's Frogs it has a lot of great things in there it has coconut bark it has the topsoil it has um, the sphagnum moss all mixed together you can see it's kind of um, separated so I'm just going to mix it back up this is great kind of starter food for the bugs that are gonna be in your enclosure, the cleanup crew. All right, now this looks like a nice layer on top, but it's actually not deep enough. So what I'm going to do is, I could use another bag of, of this substrate, but I'm actually gonna use some of the old substrate that I had in there because it has some good nutrients in there and that'll be great for the isopods. I'm going to now start kind of doing more of the design of the enclosure. I'm going to have the water come out of the back here and it's going to kind of percolate down into the water. So I wanna make a little bit of a stream through the middle of this. I'm gonna go all the way down to the mesh 
because now I'm going to add some of my rocks again to try and keep the substrate back. So it's kind of the, the banks to a little river. I want to add some plants and some, I, what you would call furniture, so branches and stuff for him to hide. So you could also call them hides. So when I'm deciding where to put the hides, I wanna make sure that everything is kind of easily accessible, the things that I need to get to. So the water dish should come right in the front here and any feeding dishes should also kind of be in the front so I can put the food in there. So you wanna leave space for those. I love cork wood, cork bark, I guess. Um, because this stuff is going to break down. It's gonna, it's gonna hold its shape for quite a while, but it's also food for your cleanup crew, so it's gonna break down as well. They're gonna eat the edges off of this. All right, now I'm gonna put in some plants. You could use fake plants, but that's not really going to have the full bioactive thing going on. So you'd still have the decomposers, decomposing the feces and some of the detritus in the bottom, in the wood and stuff like that. But the plants, they are going to clean the soil and clean the air. It's gonna make it more humid in there and it's just going to create a much more cohesive environment. And so I like to use live plants. I have a lot of pothos growing in the reptile room already. And this is an incredibly hardy plant. All I have to do is plant this in here. This has a this soil is, is perfect. This pothos is going to be clean. There's gonna be no pesticides on it because it grew here. And that's really important. If you're going to use the live plants, you have to make sure it's from a place that does not use any sorts, sort of pesticides or insecticides because that will harm not only your animal, but also all the, the little arthropods that you have as your cleanup crew. One of the things that I really enjoy about enclosure design is that you're basically creating your own little world and uh, it's, it's fun to, to just get really creative with it and put your plants where you want to and kind of imagine how they're gonna grow into this, I don't know, fun little, fun little forest scene. Okay, this is looking really good. I want to add my final layer, which is some sphagnum moss. Just gonna create a little layer over the top here. This is gonna keep the humidity as high as I want it. These guys like it about 80% humidity, 90% even sometimes. Here goes the water. I'll make a little dent in my drainage layer here. And just push it down a little bit so it creates a little pond. You can see the water's a little bit muddy right now. That's all right. As things settle down, all of the mud's gonna settle to the bottom and it'll get clear again. Before I put turd in there, I wanna turn the pump on, make sure everything's running smoothly and make any adjustments. Here we go, moment of truth. Wait for the water. My pump isn't down enough, so it's not getting the water moving. That's all right, that's an easy fix. Let's put a little bit more water in here. And this is, this is ready to go. One last mist, and let's put turd in. Hi, buddy. He has come out of his little hide in here. Look how cute he is. Good job, buddy. He's growing nice and strong. Here you go, bud. Here you go. All right, guys, it's looking really good, but I didn't like this bare spot in the front. I wanna give him more options to hide so he wants to come up into his water and come eat his food. So I grabbed a couple more pothos here and I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in the front. Red-eyed crocodile skinks are very elusive and they will not come out if they're feeling exposed. So having a lot of places for them to feel safe and hidden is gonna make them less stressed and much more healthy in the long run. All right guys, I'm gonna move his enclosure back into the shelving unit and get his light on him. So you remember we were talking about a bioactive enclosure. That's what this is. So you saw me put in the drainage layer and the substrate that was really good for the isopods and springtails. You saw me put in plants and a water feature. You didn't actually see me put in the decomposers, the, the detritivores. The substrate that I had in his previous enclosure had a healthy population, but I wanna make sure with all this disturbance and new substrate, I wanna make sure that they have a, a really healthy population in this new enclosure. So I'm going to take uh, a little culture from one of my established bioactive enclosures and I'm just gonna repopulate this one. All right, so I have the, the parents of turd, the adult red-eyed crocodile skinks, and I just took some of their substrate I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right here in the front. You can see it's got some 
old leaves that are decomposing in there. So that's gonna be really, I'm going to mist that down a little bit and all the springtails in that soil will eat all of this delicious substrate. <laughs> and any feces that turd gives them, turds of turd, <laughs> and they will repopulate this whole, whole place. And there you have it, a bioactive enclosure that you guys can do at home. I am really excited about the direction that reptile care is going. There's so much information out there on how to create a bioactive enclosure that is the best thing that you can provide for your reptiles in captivity. I hope that this has inspired you to do an improvement on any reptiles that you keep as pets. And I hope that you want to go on an adventure with us every week. If you would like to, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Animal Wonders Montana, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.